Hey guys, so let's get into your entrance slips. So that's that purple packet. Um, what we want to make sure is you've taken care of your video for lesson six, day two. Uh, there is new, there's more information that's in there. And so we want to make sure it's comfortable with it because we are seeing something that's different. It's similar, but it's different. Okay, so today in lesson six, day two, we're still, still got fractions. But we refer to this as we are combining rational terms, all right? Rational terms. And remember, your rational terms are your fractions. So we're going to use a lot of the same ideas as before. Like, in order to add fractions, you need, well, common denominators. Here's the difference in today. We've got a lot more action that's going on up in the numerator. Before, it was just a 7 or a 5x. Now we've got an expression, 2x minus 3, 5x plus 1. We just have to make sure that we make use of our distributive prop here. So let's watch this in action. So first things first, hey, common denominator, right? 10 and 5, yep, let's use 10. Okay, no big deal there. Now, in order to get your new numerators, you've got to figure out what to multiply by. Well, the first one's nice because we're multiplying by 1. When you multiply something by 1, it doesn't change things. So it's just still a 2x minus a 3. Here's where the action takes place now. You have to multiply by a 2. Okay? But you need to multiply everyone up there by a 2. So use your distributive property. 2 times 5x, 10x. 2 times 1, 2. Yeah, so this is the thing to keep in mind, is you have to multiply everyone up there by two. If there were three people up there, you'd have to multiply all three people by two. If there was one person up there, well, that's what we've been doing, just multiply one by two. But because there's two people, again, it's your distributive property. Now, I'm going to encourage you to, to rewrite here, because there's a lot that's going on. Again, some of you are going to handle the mental math here. So what I notice here is I've got a common denominator, so it's all over 10. And I need to do... 2x plus, actually, I'm going to take that back. Keep it going from left to right. Minus 3 plus 10x. So we're going to combine our like terms. I see a 2x. I see a 10x. So that's a 12x. I see a negative 3 and a positive 2. That's a negative 1 all over 10. And there's our official winning answer, 12x minus 1, all right, all divided by 10. Now, what you have to watch for, all right, is when this guy is a subtraction sign, okay? That's the big one we're going to be after there. So when you see that on your classwork, make sure you're checking your answer keys that are there because you're going to have to distribute a negative back there. And that's the part we're going to watch for. So just to kind of show you, if this problem was a subtraction sign, then it would be a 2x minus 3. And again, if this was a subtraction sign that was there, that subtraction sign has to go with every one. So it would no longer be a 10x. It would be a minus 10x. And remember, that subtraction sign also goes with the 2. So then it would also be a minus 2 that's there. So again, that's the thing that you've got to be careful for when it's addition versus subtraction. And that's part of the reason why we're going to spend three days on this. We'll spent one, this will be day two. We'll talk more as well tomorrow. All right, so question number two. This guy, um, it, there's no fractions here, as in, well, there is a fraction, but that's your distributive property. It's not all being divided by a 10 or all being divided by a 5 that's up here. So we're just going to vroom, vroom, distribute. So 2 fifths times C. All right. That's two fifths C. Uh, two fifths times negative one. Well, that's a negative two fifths. Uh, keep going. And this is what we want to watch for. Look who's there. Yeah, that's a negative one fourth. So I need to do negative one fourth times two C. Now, like we've talked about, taking a fourth of something is the same as dividing it by two. So if you take that two and you divide it by four, you actually get a half. Um, remember, it's two and then dividing it by four. Now, again, if you don't like that, you can come off to the side and do negative one-fourth times two. It's two over one. Um, you can see your cross division that's there. And now you can see, oh, yeah, there's my negative one over two. So let's multiply it. So let's multiply again times one. 
not a big deal. Now we're in the situation that we were in yesterday. So only the like terms. So I'm going to rewrite C minus one half C. All right. So those guys are now gone. So I've got a minus two fifths and I've got a minus one fourth. Again, you can see I like to circle things. I like to visually see what I'm dealing with here. All right. So common denominators now. I got a five and a two here. So we're going to go 10. Remember, I'm not going to use all of them because I can't combine all of them. So we're going to multiply by a two. So multiply by two, it's four C over 10. Multiply by five, multiply by five. So five, 10 C. I can combine these guys. Four C minus five C, negative one. So negative one, 10 C. Now I can come on over here and I can take care of these guys. Common denominator of 20 with my five and my four. I'm gonna multiply by four, so that's negative eight. I'm gonna multiply by five, so that will be a negative five here. Negative eight minus five, negative 13. So it's negative 13 twentieths. So my official winning answer is negative one tenth C minus 13 twentieths. Like we said, a lot going on here, people, a lot. Take your time, label things, don't skip too many steps. All right, um, stay organized. All right, enjoy.